And we're going to be talking about uh, today, who is this Jesus? So we today, here 2,000 years later, are uh, celebrating the death of this man and the fact that he rose again. Um, question is why? <laughs> who is he? Who is this? Uh, I think you just got to turn me off. So. In fact, that was a big question last week. If you remember last week, we celebrated Palm Sunday, and as Jesus Christ rode into Jerusalem, just as Daniel had prophesied, just as the prophets had said he would do, he came riding into Jerusalem. They were hailing him as a king, Hosanna, and all of that, and he came in. But the question was, and if you look at it, and you'll need to turn there right now, but Matthew chapter 21, it says everybody was asking each other, who is this? Who is this guy riding in? And some was like, oh, he's that prophet from Nazareth. Some say, oh, he's that guy that raised Lazarus from the dead, right? And we saw last week, he is so much more than that, isn't he? So much more than just a prophet or just one that can heal, even more than an earthly king. But what I wanted to do is kind of go through the week, first of all, and talk about how did different people picture Jesus? How did they see him? And then how should we see him? Because after he rose from the dead, even his disciples only then got a full picture of who Jesus is. And who he really is makes all the difference in the world. We must believe and understand who he is to truly live a life abundant in him, full of faith in him, because who he is makes a difference, right? Not what we think he is. In fact, we're going to start with the people. As I said, they were basically saying he's a prophet, he's that guy. And we're going to go through the week. And it started on last Sunday, and they basically saw him as an earthly king, an earthly king who could come and take care of their problems. Who was their biggest problem? Well, the Romans, right? <laughs> Get rid of those people. Drive them out. Come and feed us and make us prosperous. We want you to be that earthly king talked about in the Old Testament who would come and sit upon the throne and make Israel the greatest nation in the world and rule over everybody and make us wealthy and powerful. But is that what he was? That's not what he came to do this time, is it? But that's what they saw an earthly king. Now, on Monday, they saw him going to the temple. <laughs> they, go, they saw him going there and tip over tables and get a whip and get people out of there. They saw him as that rabble rouser, right? That guy's going to shake up the system. How many feel like that sometimes? Sometimes the system just needs to be shaken up, right? Wish somebody would just come in and rattle a little bit and get things straight. Because let's face it, those people who were doing that stuff in the temple, the money changers and the people selling the sacrifices at great profit themselves. Was that helping the people? <laughs> it wasn't to help the people. It was to help the, them, those in charge, those who had. And they said, ah, he's our guy. Yeah, he's going to go. He's go. He'll go up against those in authority. In fact, they also saw that on Tuesday and Wednesday. Each day, Jesus would come into town and the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes and everybody would kind of come after him. All these people who have great authority and great intelligence, right? They would come up and they'd ask him questions, trying to trip him up, trying to get him to say something. To, and all Jesus did is make them look like fools. You think the people like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, got a, we got a king. We got, a, got somebody who's going to shake up this system. Stick up for the little guy, right? We have one that can sh quiet those loud mouths, those... They guys think they're superior to everybody else. We haven't put them down, right? But what happened Thursday? Thursday they saw him arrested. They saw him charged as a heretic. They didn't see him as a king now, did they? They didn't see him as one that could shake up the system. They didn't see him as one who could make quiet all of those haughty people they saw somebody who was being destroyed by that system. Saw a Sanhedrin that had power over him. The Romans had power over him. They saw him. In fact, on Friday morning, what did they see? They saw one that was drugged before them in the court of Pilate who had been beaten, who had been humiliated, who said nothing, nothing to his defense. He did not stand up against Rome. 
He's not this king we were looking for. This isn't the one that's going to come and take down the chief priests and all of those like we thought he would. They're sitting there bringing charges, and he's saying nothing. He's not what we want. So on Friday, what did they see him as? One they just wanted to get rid of. Therefore, when they had a choice, I will give you Jesus or Barabbas. Which one did they choose? Barabbas. When they had a choice between Caesar as their king or Jesus as their king, which did they choose? Caesar is our king. When they had a choice to set him free or crucify him, they said what? Crucify him. He's not what we want. And as John wrote, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. And they rejected him. And on Saturday, that day of rest, what did they see him? Just another wannabe. <laughs> Just another guy who said he was Messiah and lost. Another guy who went up against the system and lost. They saw him as a loser. How many are glad that's not who he is? Because Sunday proved he wasn't, <laughs> right? In fact, let's think about that for a minute. How did the leaders, and I put leaders, you notice I put little quotations around there. So. Because some of them were appointed by God to be leaders, but they were not leading the people to where they were supposed to be going, right? Some were self-appointed leaders, and they weren't leading the people to where they were supposed to be going either. And these leaders, the chief priests and the, those of the temple and those of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes who were supposed to be leading the people to God were actually leading them where? Away from him. And how did they see Jesus on Sunday? <laughs> they saw him as a threat, didn't they? In fact, that's when they gathered together and said, we've got to stop this guy. Don't you see all these people are going after him? After he raised Lazarus, it just seemed like a tidal wave of people were like, hey, this guy raises the dead. In fact, what was their great solution to that problem? Let's kill Lazarus. <laughs> that was what they came up with. Lest everybody go after him, and if everybody goes after and follows Jesus, then the Romans are going to hear, hear about it, and they're going to come in, and they're going to attack us, and they're going to take away our freedoms. They're going to take away our power. They saw him as a what? A threat. In fact, they went to him and said, make these people stop saying that. I love Jesus' response. If they stopped, the rocks would cry out. In other words, they are dumber than what? Rocks. <laughs> I, love, I love they chose rocks, too, because rocks are the things that were created at the beginning that are still here. Think about that for a moment. Sun, moon, stars, yeah, but on the earth, what's still here that was there day one? Rocks. <laughs> rocks are the bedrock, right? So on Sunday, they saw him as a threat. What did they see him on Monday? troublemaker. He's challenging us. In fact, they went to him and said, by what authority do you do these things? How, who gives you the right to come into the temple and clean it up? And he says, well, it's my father's house. <laughs> of course I have a right, right? It's my father's house. You're not supposed to be doing that kind of thing. And by the way, uh, John the Baptist, by what authority did he do what he did? <laughs> they had no answer for that, did they? And on Tuesday and Wednesday, they saw him as an opponent. Somebody they could outsmart. Somebody they could come and take down. Somebody they could get to make a mistake. They're playing chess, right? Jesus was not playing chess. I don't know what he was playing. <laughs> he was playing a game far beyond what they could master. They thought by their intelligence, by their wit, by their wisdom, they could challenge him and they could defeat him. But they could not, could they? And by Thursday, what did they see him as? Somebody needed to be gone. So they had him arrested. Judas was willing to betray him and tell him them where he was going to be kind of alone, away from the people, so they could arrest him, right? Out in the garden. They sent some soldiers over there to arrest him, and they brought him in. And boy, they tried. They tried to find something they could accuse him of. And I was thinking about this in my own life. If I was ever brought before a court, could they find something I'd done wrong? What's the answer? 
Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> How many have ever, ever broken a law? Everybody's done something wrong. Oh, we have. And they're using God's law, right? They're using the Old Testament. They're, can, can we find anything he has done wrong or said wrong? And they found nothing. What did they finally get him for? Anybody know what the charge was finally? Blasphemy. Blasphemy, yeah. Claiming to be God. Now, again, as I've always said, if you or I did that, that would be blasphemy. Because we are what? None, right? It's like I could say I'm Tommy, right? But I'm what? Not. <laughs> now, if Tommy said he's Tommy, is that okay? Because he's what? Tommy. <laughs> right? And that's just reality. But he is God, but they got him and said, ah, oh, we've got him now. They even did the whole ripping the clothes and the gnashing of the teeth and the whole, the whole thing. They, they really played it up. And they were able then to take him where? Take him to Pilate. And how'd they see him there? Really as a pawn. That's what he was. And a little game that they were playing with Pilate and the Romans. Did Pilate want to charge him? Could he find anything to charge him for? No. Nothing. Violations of no laws whatsoever. In fact, it got to the point where they got so frustrated that the Jewish leadership finally said, okay, listen, if you don't do something with this guy, you are no friend of Caesar's. Right? You got to do something. So he finally washed his hands the whole thing and says... You got him. We will claim that he claimed to be the king of the Jews. That's the charge. That's what they wrote above his head. That was the only thing they could charge him. Did he ever claim to be the king of the Jews? He is the king of all kings. He is the king of all things. But he said, I am not here to be king on this earth. My kingdom is not here, not now. Right? But they still charged him with it because they had to put something down. They saw him as a heretic. And they saw him as somebody that needed to be gone. They saw him as a liar. And they had him killed. And what did they see him as Saturday? It's kind of funny because they still saw him as a threat. <laughs> Not because he would rise again, but because maybe his disciples, maybe his friends would come and steal him away. And they would say he had risen again. They made the Romans put all the seals all over it and put guards on it just to make sure it didn't happen. But can you stop God's plan? Can you stop God from keeping his promises? And what happened on that third day? That Sunday morning as the sun rose, Jesus rose from the dead. And he was seen of Mary and the other women. And then he was seen of the 12, well, first the nine and then the 10. And then <laughs> and he was seen over and over again, was he? One time by 500 he was seen. Because he is what? Alive and well. So you see the way the world looked at him. And even his disciples. Let's go to John chapter 6. How did his disciples see him? And we looked at this uh, last week. And this is the bottom line of how they saw him. But we're going to see a problem. That's why that word's in. But. How did his disciples see Jesus? John chapter 6, verse 67. This is right after the feeding of the 5,000. That next day, as all those people who were fallen went away, because they're like, we can't understand this. Are you going to feed us or not? Are you here to meet our physical needs? We don't understand this spiritual stuff. We're leaving. And he turned to his own disciples and said, will you leave too? And what does it say here? Verse 67. Then Jesus said to the twelve, will you go away? And Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that you are that Christ, the Son of the living God. Let's give him a hand, people. Yeah. But, <laughs> what does Mike Tyson say? Everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. Um, that's what they believed in their heart. But then he was what? Arrested. And then what did they do? Ran away. Well, first take a sword, swipe. <laughs> but then ran away. Then he was taken to trial, right? And they watched. John and Peter watched as he was sit there and he was humiliated and he was laughed at and he was mocked. And what did Peter do? 
denied to him, denied even knowing him. I do not know, even swearing, cursing, saying he has never met the man before in his life. Three times. And then what did they do? John was at the cross. Where was everybody else? <laughs> I don't even know John was there because his, Jesus' mother was there and said, Behold your son. John, where was everybody else? Where were all of his friends? Where were the people who believed that this was the Christ? Who believed that he was the one promised to come? Where were they? In fact, where were they when he rose from the dead? Well, the women were headed to the sepulcher, right? They were, they were going to the tomb. To what? Put spices on his dead body. Did they believe that he was the risen Lord? Did they believe that he is who he says he is? Really? In fact, Mary, after she sees the empty tomb, goes and tells John and Peter. They come and see. She stays behind. Does she believe he's risen yet? No. Because what is it? She sees a gardener and says, what? If you know where they've laid him, please show him to me so I can take him. She still doesn't believe until Jesus says, what? Mary. Then, he, then she finally knew. Two guys on the road to Emmaus, they didn't believe it. They had the reports from John and Peter and from the women. They had all those reports that Jesus Christ is not in the tomb. He's gone. Women said he's risen again. We have seen him. And they were like, oh, let's, let's go. <laughs> we got things to do. Let's go to Emmaus. And Jesus met them on the way to show them that he is alive and well. They come back and tell the disciples, hey, we've seen him too. And what did they believe? Oh, no. Until Jesus walked into that room. What were they doing? They were living in fear. They were hiding they had, no, they had no hope, did they? Their Savior was dead, gone. They did not believe he was anything other than that point than the dead Savior. Until he came in and had dinner with them, talked to them. But even one of them wasn't there, Thomas. He comes back in and they say, we've all seen him. And he says what? I will not believe until I stick my hand in his side, my fingers in his holes. Why? Because they just couldn't get their mind around who he really is. Not just a man. Not just a prophet. Not just a great teacher. He is God in the flesh who came and died for their sins and what? Rose again the third day. In fact, we're going to take a look at some passages here. And let's see who he really is after the resurrection. He really lets people know. Luke chapter 24. And the rest will be in John. Who is this one that we come today and celebrate? The one we serve every day. The one we put our faith in every moment. Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek you the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. In Galilee, right before he came from there down to Jerusalem, he said, I'm going to Jerusalem. I will be betrayed and I will be killed. And on the third day I will rise again. And they all went, uh-huh. They really believe? Don't you remember what he said? Saying, the Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of simple men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And then they remembered his words. Who is he? He is the risen Savior, right? <laughs> he told you, I am going to go and I am going to die and the third day I will rise again. He is a living Savior. How important is that? Yeah. How relevant is he to your life today? <laughs> Must be very relevant because he's alive today, isn't he? He's not just one that we come once a year and say, hey, I remember you. 
I remember what you did for me. I remember those good times we had. And then the rest of the year, we just kind of put him on the back burner and say, ah, he's gone. No, he's alive every day, every moment of every year. And he is with you, isn't he? He is the risen Savior, our living Savior, right? That's who he is. Beyond that, let's go to John chapter 20. Go back to the conversation with Mary. John chapter 20, verse 15. And again, this is Mary as she's there, doesn't know what happened to Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest you? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She return, turned herself and said unto him, What? Rabboni wishes to say what? Master. Once she finally saw him, she knew he was her what? Master. Teacher. You are the one, right? You're, you're the teacher, the one I was following. You are the one. Is he still that to you today? Is he your master and your teacher? Is he alive? Is he a living master and teacher? Or just somebody we kind of think about what he used to say? <laughs> no, he's our living master and teacher. Let's keep going. Verse 19 of chapter 20. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, so we're still on Sunday, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Keep that in mind. This is, he rose at sunrise and still, how many hours later are they still cowering in a dark room hoping nobody finds out they're there? Crazy, isn't it? They've seen this. A couple of them have seen the sepulcher. The women have said they've seen him. A couple of the other ones said they saw him on the way to Emmaus. They, they've said he's alive and still they don't believe, do they? Where the disciples assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the who? Lord. (laughs) He is also what? Lord, Jehovah, God in the flesh. He is the living Lord, right? But it wasn't until they saw him that they finally said, Ah, this is our Lord, right? He is our master, he is our Lord, he is our risen Savior. Do you believe that? Let's go to verse 27. Because again, Thomas wasn't there. (laughs) That's why we call him what? Doubting Thomas. Don't you hate it when one thing in your life just sticks with you and you get that nickname and just think, (laughs) man. (laughs) I know in heaven we're all going to, Anybody calls him that, probably gets a punch in the nose. But <laughs> Give him a break. Verse 27, Then Jesus said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my... What? <laughs> There's two very important words there. One is God, right? But also, I love this word... My. Not just a Lord. (laughs) Not just the Lord. He is what? My Lord. He is my God. We have a personal relationship, don't we? With a man who is alive and well. A God who is alive and well. A Lord and Master who is what? Alive and well. A Savior who is alive and well. And He is ours and we are His. How many are thankful for that? It's not some dead person, not some dead stone, not some dead idea. It's a living Savior that we serve, right? And he is my God and my Lord. So, what should we do? In fact, let's keep going. Chapter 21. By the way, the disciples finally did make it to Galilee, (laughs) which is where they were supposed to go. See, God's plan was that he die, and they go to Galilee, and he'll just meet them all there. Away from all the prying eyes, away from all the stuff going on in Jerusalem. Instead, they decided to hide. They decided to stay there. They didn't do anything right. Does God still love them, by the way? 
Yes. Did he still come to them? Yes. Was he still patient with them? Yes. How many have <laughs> before God like that? <laughs> yes. They finally need to go to Galilee. They're out fishing. And Jesus comes to the shore. He says, throw it on the other side. And they catch a ton of fish. And they know it's Jesus. And they have a great reunion, right? They have breakfast together. And then he says, Peter, let's talk. Why Peter? Well, the last time they were... <laughs> Uh, together before the crucifixion, what was Peter doing? Denying him three times, and then their eyes locked. Right? Is that still weighing on Peter? Would that still weigh on your mind? I, I blew it. I'm, I'm glad you're alive and everything, but there's no way you can use me, right? He pulls them aside. Starting in verse 18 of chapter 21. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girded thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest. This spake he, signifying by what death Peter should glorify God. And when he had spoken thus, he said unto him, what? Follow me. Given that Jesus Christ is alive and well, he is our risen Savior, our risen Master, our risen Lord, our risen God. He is ours, right? We should what? Follow him. Because he's our living shepherd, isn't he? He's our living guide, isn't he? Yeah, I just realized I've got two, two of the same ones. I got that. Don't worry, I got you. <laughs> My paper's right. We'll get, we'll get it right. But we should follow him, shouldn't we? Again, we're not following a dead idea, a dead person, a dead piece of wood, are we? We're following a living God, aren't we? We should follow him, shouldn't we? And that's what Peter was called to do. He was also called to do this. Jump back up, because I messed up on the board, to verse 15. 15, 17. For those at home, we'll just edit that out. Matt, uh, Corey, can you can you go? Okay, good. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou more than these? And he said to him, Yea, Lord, you know that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. Right? I got work for you to do. You love me? We're cool. But then Jesus said it again. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he said to him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said, Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Then yeah, let's get to work, right? And then he said it what? The third time. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him a third time, lovest thou me? Why three times? Three times denied, three times asked, right? And Peter says, and he said unto him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. You know what we ought to also do is love him. You know what's also important here? Know that he loves you. Will he forgive you when you mess up? Will he restore you when you mess up? Will he keep working with you when you mess up? Does he know that we're mess ups? <laughs> he knows everything about us. Isn't that what he said? You know all things, Jesus. You know that I love you. And Jesus says what? That's enough. Love your risen Savior. Love your living Master. Love your living Lord. Love the one who is your God and your Lord. Love him. And then what? Follow him. Right? So, comes the big question, right? Who is Jesus to you? Is he your living Savior? Is he your God? Is he your living God? Is he your Lord? Is he your shepherd? Is he your friend? He can be so many things. He is all those things, isn't he? But keep in mind, he's alive and well and loves you and is coming again, isn't he? He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is all those things. He's the creator of all things. But he what? Loves you. Love him. Follow him. And know that he is who he says. Before he met with them before they came to those epiphanies of, hey, you're alive. <laughs> my Lord, my God, you're alive, my Lord. Well, you're alive, my master. Before they got that, they were living in fear. 
They were living as if he was dead. They were living in doubt. They were living in just uh, without any hope. Don't live that way. Because Jesus is alive. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen.